When we dispose of a non-current asset, in most cases, we're going to make either a profit or a loss. So let's look at what we mean by that. While we own a non-current asset, we're going to depreciate it. And it's going to be done by one of two ways. Either it's straight line where we do cost less residual divided by useful life, or it'll be reducing balance depreciation, which is our reducing balance percentage times by our carrying value at the end of the period. So to make um, these calculations, we need to make some guesses. So for straight line, we make a guess on residual value and useful life. These are just numbers that have been estimated. But for reducing balance, we also make a guess on the percentage of depreciation. It's an arbitrary guess. Why would we pick 20 and not 25, for instance? Um, yeah, there's no source document to back this up. So just looking at a little bit of theory, there's always going to be a conflict between relevance and reliability when it comes to depreciation because it is relevant. We need it in order to get the actual expense of using a non-current asset. We can then match that to uh, with the revenue that it generated. That'll help us calculate an accurate profit and we can then make good decisions. So that's why we need depreciation, but we need to remember that it's not reliable on the other hand. So we um, are going to make some guesses no matter which method of depreciation we use. If we use straight line, we're going to make a guess on residual and useful life. And if we're going to use reducing balance, we'll guess that reducing balance percentage. So reliability says you can't do that. You shouldn't make any estimates and there is no source document to verify those. So therefore, we always have that conflict uh, between relevance and reliability. Let's look at, because these are guesses, I guess it's going to be quite common that these guesses prove out not to be correct. So, for example, let's say we've got an asset that costs $10,000. After three years, it's now got a carrying value of $4,000. In other words, we've depreciated it from 10 to 4. So, we looked at in the previous video, now we dispose of it, how much do we try and get? Well, what if we only get $2,000? We've got a little bit of a discrepancy here. What we've got is uh, what we call uh, under depreciation. We haven't depreciated this enough. What we should have done is depreciated this all the way from 10,000 down to 2,000, but we didn't. What we did with our estimates is our estimates only ended up depreciating it from 10,000 to 4,000. So we say that's under depreciation. It's currently in our books valued at 4,000. We're selling it for only two. What we say is that we're going to make a loss of $2,000. That's called a loss on disposal. So looking at a different situation, we've got a $5,000 asset. It's now got a carrying value of $2,000. That is if we were to dispose of it, we'd be hoping to get at least $2,000. And we did a little bit better than that. We got $3,000. So what just happened? We had an asset. We should have depreciated it only down to here. If we were going to actually get it correct when we started doing this three years ago, we would have estimated that in three years time, we'd be able to get $3,000 of uh, cash for this. I guess what we're saying is the economic benefits would have been $3,000, but we didn't guess that. What we guessed was, we had unused economic benefits of $2,000. We have depreciated it too much. So what we say is that that is over depreciation. So we valued it in our books at $2,000. That's how many unused economic benefits we believe there's left. But given that someone's paid $3,000, they must believe that's how many economic benefits are left over. So what we say is that we've actually made a little bit of a profit there of $1,000 and we call that a profit on disposal. So under and over depreciation always happen because the carrying value at the time of when we dispose of the asset simply doesn't equal the uh, sale or trade in amount. So take the example on the left, the carrying value was 4,000, but we only sold it for 2,000. That was an under depreciation or a loss on disposal. Uh, this one here, we had a cost of 5,000. By the time we disposed of it, we had a carrying value of 2000 but we sold it for 3000 There was a difference between the carrying value and the sale amount. We called it in that instance, that was called over depreciation or a profit on disposal. Just to summarize, under depreciation, what is it? It is when a non-current asset is not depreciated enough 
It's caused by an overestimation of either useful life residual value or we should have the reducing balance percentage in there as well. That'll lead to an expense which we call a loss on disposal. Over depreciation is the opposite. That is when we have depreciated an asset too much. That is caused again by an underestimation of either the useful life, the residual value or the reducing balance percentage. And that'll lead to a revenue called a profit on disposal of a non-current asset. Why are these estimates wrong? Why are the estimates about residual value, useful life and also reducing balance percentage, why are they wrong? Well, maybe the time period that we originally estimated is longer or shorter. So we thought we were going to own something for five years and we only ended up using it for three, for example. Maybe the assets um, damaged or severely marked, which affects how much we can dispose of it for. Maybe the assets no longer popular. There's not much of a secondhand market for it. Could be the wrong style or color. And uh, maybe it's obsolete or outdated. It can't be sold or traded in for as much as we originally estimated, say for today, a desktop computer, which isn't really used too much anymore. People use laptops or maybe an old iPhone. So these are the reasons why our estimates could be wrong.